And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Two Schmo Show. I'm Sanic, and I'm a schmo. I'm Carol, and I'm also a schmo. And um, what a week to take off, ladies and gentlemen. Now we get to do the comparison and contrast of two blockbuster movies that are trying so hard to be blockbuster movies. And, uh, well, here we are. Sony's really desperate. Sony is so desperate. Like, I don't get it. It's that's one of those things that Sony does where if you look at like every other one of their products, yeah, they are so content to just kind of be in their own bubble. Like with the PlayStation, you have Xbox who's partnering with stuff, doing crossovers and collaborations. They have Game Pass so you can get Xbox exclusives on PC now on the same day. And then Sony's just like, no, we're good. <laughs> And it's like they come out the way they they had their uh, PlayStation Plus Extra or whatever the fuck they're calling it now. Yes. Which is supposed to be their Game Pass competitor. And it'll probably be fine. But at the same time, it's just like oh, you it's hard to compare them because one is a lot better than the other. But if you want to play PlayStation games, you're kind of just stuck doing Sony shit. Yeah. And but then you get to like Sony movie stuff. And they are just trying so hard to be relevant. The only thing they've got going on for them that I will concede is a quality that I'm excited is Spider-Verse. Mm-hmm. The animation department's been doing a lot better. Mitchell's versus Machines were oh, good. Yeah. Um, for sure. But Sony's film department, like the big F film? Mm-hmm. Come on. For those of you who have not... well. <sighs> don't don't worry it'll all make sense with the amazing spider-man 3 which won't be a bad movie in any way i'm sure ladies and gentlemen morbius is finally out and i'm fittingly it's uh was released on april fool's day so <laughs> it checks out i was going to announce this beforehand but i am been alerted on the wikipedia page of the budget for morbius in the box office oh, for no. morbius my good sure, sir. Good. Let's see this. Okay. Yeah. The budget is 75 to 83 do- uh, million dollars. Mm-hmm. The box office is already at 126 dollars and four uh 0.4 million. Yeah. I'm very upset that this thing is somewhat making a profit. Well, when you don't hire writers, I guess you can save money. Ooh. So that was the big thing that I was seeing in like the handful of reviews that I saw is yeah. that like nothing makes sense. And it's kind of what we were getting to when we were talking about it beforehand was that you look at the characters and like the villain is somebody that barely has an identity, let alone a character. And they're turning them into the villain of this movie. And from what I hear, it's like, it's just bad. It's not a good character. It's very poorly written. Yes. So I thought it'd be fun if we uh, clowned on the plot, since I don't think many people are going to be upset if we post Morbius spoilers in this podcast. Yeah. If if you want to go see Morbius, go go see Morbius. You would have already seen it. it by now. Yes. You probably. I, that is a fair. I, I did see people talking about it. Uh, from the perspective of being like the movie that teenagers will probably go and see because they know it'll be an empty theater. Yeah. This is where you go to smoke that weed that your uh, parents don't know you have. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> At a hospital in Greece, 10 year old Michael Morbius welcomes his surrogate brother, Lucian, whom he renames Milo. They bond over their shared blood illness and desire to be quote unquote normal. Their adopted father and hospital director, Nicholas, arranges for Michael to attend a medical school in New York while he focuses on caring for Milo. Why is only one character got a last name? Wait, so this guy's adoptive father arranged for him to become a doctor when he was 10 years old? Yes. What the fuck? (laughs) <laughs> what an awful parent that's the real villain holy shit sorry kid you're going to medical school take on all that debt 
Oh, here's our hospital bill while you're at it, punk. Yeah. 25 years later, Michael publicly declines a Nobel Peace Prize for his work with synthetic blood. Michael's colleague, Martine Bancroft, discovers he has secretly captured dozens of vampire bats from Costa Rica in the hope of splicing their genes with his own to cure his condition. After informing Nicholas and Milo of his planned illegal experiment, Michael receives funding to outfit a private mercenary vessel in international waters with his equipment. While the cure works, it transforms Michael into a vampire. Michael kills and drains the crew of their blood after they attack him out of fear. Once the, his bloodlust subsides and he gain, regains his sen- senses, a horrified Michael erases all the CCTV footage of his experiment before contacting the authorities and jumping overboard. What? Yes. So... What I want to know is, when does he become a vampire? Like, when he's out on the water? It sounds like it. Yeah, but... He gets infused with this genetically modified bat blood, and it turns him into a vampire. Bat blood. That his adoptive father is, I guess, okay with? Yeah? Why is this... I, I have so many questions from that. Why is it an illegal experiment, for one? Like, animal abuse is a thing that just, like, happens all the time in research as kind of a necessary consequence for it. So, where did this become illegal, requiring them to go out in a fucking boat to do it? I want to know why the vampire bats. Yeah. What is his disease? Yes. Yes. Why do you need? He has, uh, yeah, blood illness. Blood illness that his synthetic blood can't help him with. How do the fuck does synthetic blood work? So, we, Wikipedia actually has like an associated page with this. I was actually curious. Yeah, um, it is a substance used to mimic and fulfill some functions of biological blood. So rather than taking, you know, like human blood that's been, you know, donated, they make an alternative synthetically. That is a, a red Kool-Aid filled with iron and proteins. Basically, yeah. <laughs> so I guess the implication is that this genetically enhanced bat blood was just so good it turned him into a vampire. Genetically altered bat blood got me like... Michael returns to New York and discovers he now has superhuman strength, speed, reflexes, and echolocation. With his vampire bats treating him as a bat, he insists on his synthetic blood until it gradually ceases to satisfy his needs. FBI agent agents Simon Stroud and Al Rodriguez investigate Michael's victims and induce his involvement. Milo learns that Michael is cured, but becomes furious when Michael refuses to cure him as well. No shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's a dick move. <laughs> Morbius is the villain. While checking in on a hospital t- hospitalized Bancroft, Michael finds a dead nurse drained of her blood. Believing he was responsible, he attempts to escape before being cornered and arrested. In prison, Michael is visited by Milo who offers to use his wealth to free him upon realizing Milo took his own cure and killed the nurse. Michael escapes to confront him, and an unrepentant Milo confesses to his bloodlust-induced crime and urges Michael to embrace his powers as well. Unwilling to hurt his brother, Michael flees. Because apparently this is the part that, like, makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, like... Because why is milo like just flick of a switch a gigantic piece of shit why is morbius like why is everybody a gigantic piece of shit yeah like like the implication here is that they had the exact same thing done to them they both started off good people yeah and then morbius is you know still a piece of shit but morally intact but milo isn't so here's my thing right Morbius yeah. is under the Hippocratic Oath, and 
That ex- <laughs> yeah, it explains why he won't like hurt Milo, but he's also like, I don't care enough about you, my brother I've known since my age of 10, to save you from this ailment that we both suffer from. It just seems like such bullshit that he is willing to evade international law doing his experiments on a goddamn boat because he knows how unaccepted it is, but he's willing to do it for himself still, but then not for his adoptive brother. Yeah. Like, okay. We need to know, like, is being a vampire that bad? Like it, it, seriously, if you just said, I don't want to turn you to a vampire. Boom. Michael meets Bancroft to explain what Milo has done before acquiring a new lab and developing an anti collogent to stop and kill Milo. He plans to use it on himself since he will become unable to resist his bloodlust. Stroud and Rodriguez find footage of one of Milo's attacks and, believing Morbius' vampirism is to be spreading, release it to the media. Nicholas recognizes Milo and pleads with him to stop, angering by, angered by Nicholas's uh, perceived, perceived no there's no perception here it's objective perceived medical school preference old. perceived preference for michael milo wounds and forces him to call michael wounds and forces him that's such an awkwardly worded sentence yeah it should be milo wounds him and forces him to call michael <sighs> This is weird. Michael watches Nicholas die while Milo... I don't like these names. Michael and Milo. Yeah. It's not, like, you say it enough, they lose their meaning. Attacks Should have ba- kept Lucian. Lucian. That's badass. It's different. Yeah. It sounds like a villain name. It does. Michael returns to Bancroft, but she dies in his arms and he drinks her blood. Michael confronts Milo and summons an army of bats to restrain him and inject the anti collogen Milo dies and Morbius flies off with the bats, mourning his loved ones and embracing his identity as a vampire. Unknown, unbeknownst to him, Bancroft is revived by her newly developed vampiric powers. Why only <laughs> her? Yes, why only her out of everybody he sucked blood from in this movie? They've killed like 20 people in the same way. Because she's named, Chiral. Apparently. She's a named character and they need sequel bait. Which, speaking of sequel bait. Speaking of. Adrian Toomes is transported to Michael's universe by a spell. Assuming that his transportation involved Spider Man, Toomes approaches Michael and suggests that they form a team. <laughs> Go on, hey guys, Remember Marvel? We promised we're a Marvel movie. They're so lucky they own the cinematic rights to Spider-Man. Could you imagine, like, 10 years from now, Sony sells the rights back to Marvel, right? And then the first thing they do is just sue them for using it in this movie. Yeah. Um, can't say I'm too impressed. Nope. It just sounds dumb. There's so much stuff that just doesn't make sense in it. I don't know. In January 2021, Leto said there was potential for Morbius to appear alongside the character Blade in a future project. And this is Cinematic Universe Blade. Mashallah Ali. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. I'm terrible. Uh, That December, in discussing the introduction of the multiverse in Spider-Man No Way Home, Leto said that there was potential for further crossovers with his character in future films. Tom Holland has also expressed interest in seeing his version of Spider-Man from the MCU fighting Morbius in the future, which producers Kevin Feige and Amy Pascal confirmed interest in a potential film starring both Leto and Ali. In March 2022, Leto also expressed interest in a future film featuring Morbius appearing alongside Venom, portrayed by Tom Hardy. They're really trying. Mm -hmm. They want this so bad. They really do. Man. 
Wait, what? Sony signed deals with Netflix and Disney in April 2021 for the U.S. streaming TV rights to their 2022 to 2026 film Slate, Slate following the film's theatrical home release. Netflix signed for exclusive pay one window streaming rights, which is typically an 18-month window and included future Marvel films in Sony's Spider-Man universe. Disney signed for pay two. What the fuck does that even mean? What is so this? Netflix gets it for 18 months and then Disney gets it? Yes. Apparently. The director has cited Pokemon as an influence on the portrayal of Morbius's powers, specifically singling out the series use of light and color to portray the title character's attacks no. and abilities. Seriously? That's in the post production. An... Yes. <sighs> And I found it. Yep. That's actually in there. IGN.com articles. Morbius director took inspiration for Pokemon. Misspelt. Wow. Wow. Where are we? (laughs) Yeah. That's a good question. This is the strangest future ever since that damn gorilla got shot. Um, so I guess that's Morbius, ladies and gentlemen. Overall, I think it's a pretty decent movie. It's got a decent enough budget that it really can't go wrong and be a fundamentally broken movie, despite what the plot might say. So overall... With how greatly disappointed by it, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Apparently, what is this? Cinema score audiences gave the film an average grade of a C plus on an A plus to F scale, making it the second worst of any Marvel adaptation ahead of only Fantastic Four 2015. I knew it was going to be Fan Four Stick at the bottom. Mm hmm. You know what's weird? The fact Mm. that these movies, Sony, keep making the main hero fight just an evil version of themselves. Yep. Like, what the fuck? They did it twice. Three times. Yeah, twice with Venom. Three times? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's been a third Venom yet, but I don't really follow that close to it, so maybe I'm wrong. (laughs) Yeah. Truthfully, I do like the the Venom movies. Oh, yeah. Well, the Venom movies have enough dumb stuff that you can kind of just enjoy them for what they are, but this seems to take itself way more seriously. (laughs) Over-perceived preference. So, you know what I just kind of realized? They never cite Michael or Milo as um, orphans. So, why is this Nicholas dude just, like, kidnapping them and just sending them to medical school? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Hmm. Gotta watch the movie, man. Come on. Oh, shit. Yeah, dude. I'm just such a... I am a filthy Marvel casual, don't you know? You know what I'm really hoping for? What's that? I'm just really hoping this month goes by fast because I'm so fucking excited for Doctor Strange 2. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be a nice way to pick up the pace. I'm looking up the, the writers for it. Yeah. And this is weird. Have you ever heard of the movie Dracula Untold? Yes, actually. Have you? Yes. I remember. I have it. That came out like when we At were all. in college. 2014. Oh, never mind. Starting college. Which, I mean, early, early on, yeah. Yeah. Um, the first movie that these guys did together, uh, $70 million budget, $217 million in the box office. Okay. I I haven't even heard of it before this. Well, I believe that was like, so. Uh, I think it was Universal trying to make a monster universe based off the Universal Monsters. 24% on Rotten Tomatoes. Then they did The Last Witch Hunter, 
which somehow also turned a profit on the box office. Do you ever... 17% on Rotten Tomatoes. No. Gods of Egypt, which barely scraped by a profit. They have an entire entry in the Wikipedia page for racial and ethnic casting. See also whitewashing in film. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, critical reception. 15% on Rotten Tomatoes. Nominated for one, two, three, four, five golden raspberries. <laughs> they were nominated for worst screen combo f- uh, for any two Egyptian gods or mortals. <laughs> <laughs> That's so mean. And then to cap it off, they did the 2017 Power Rangers movie, their biggest success ever, with a 51%. Oof. Which also barely made a profit. Here they are, doing it all over again. Can't they they did all these movies this. together? Yeah, it, it's a duo. Matt Sazama Ciz- and Burke Sharpless, whoever the fuck they are. When do they start realizing maybe something's not working here? <laughs> yeah, who knows? They're like the opposite of Chris Lord and Phil Miller. Wait, are they Chris Lord and Phil Miller? I think I may got the last names fixed up. Chris Lord... No, it's Phil Miller. Okay. No, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. Those are the guys that did Spider-Verse together. They're like the anti-Lord and Miller. Yep. So enough about vampires uh, trying to drain the blood out of us. Let's talk about hedgehogs. Hedgehogs, yeah. Because this week, uh, fucking Sonic is out. And the biggest complaint I've seen on the internet is Edris Elba plays one fucking sexy echidna. Which I cannot confirm or deny. Can't say I've ever found echidnas attractive. Well, I can say that Edris Elba, though, you know, still just Elba. Oh, yeah. Edris Elba. I'd imagine in hedgehog form, it can only get so bad. It can only get so bad. I don't know, I man. <laughs> do, you, do you know the thing about uh, echidnas? No. Do Literally you... nothing. <laughs> I, I vaguely know what they might look like. but Echidnas otherwise... have four-headed penises. Oh, well, you know, whatever people are into. I don't judge. Oh, fair enough. You see, like... With people who take fur, uh, furryism in a sexual direction, right? Mm. You would think the echidna would be more popular in that world than, you know, the traditional fox, hounds, and uh, cats. Yes, but you have to consider that would require creativity. Damn, dude. And most furries are like 15. <laughs> like, think about like the first story that most people write. Yo. And how generic and bad it is. Furries aren't that different. They're just doing it for their first character. Your first OC. Yeah. Dude. Your first self-insert. So, a lot of social media algorithms realize I like creative shit. And one of the things they keep doing is giving me people's first drafts of something on social media that they post to kind of like drum up interest. And it's very obviously a first draft, so I'm never knocking that kind of stuff. But it's also the kind of stuff where I'm like, oh, God, don't let me see. Why are you posting your first draft on here? What the fuck? Yeah. (laughs) No one's first draft is ever good. No, it's not. No. There's a reason it's called a first draft. Like, dude. Okay. This is a PSA to all the creatives out there. Never post your first draft. Never. Don't even don't let people know. post it publicly. Send it to someone you trust to review it, but, like, don't post it publicly. Don't let that live forever. Yeah. Like, dude, come on. 
Tumblr is a very bad place to catch a lot of first drafts because it's a lot of <laughs> teenagers <laughs> not realizing what creativity means sometimes. All that collective angst. Dude, my brother is posting TikToks. Um, yes, that's enough to get your sympathy, everybody. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. the, the crazy part about this, right, is he's uh, posting very violent TikToks. So much so it's like edgy anime shit to, to very aggressive music. And I realized today, well, actually, the, the first time I saw one of these, I, as an older male influence, probably am not in his life enough if he's doing this kind of shit. So what I'm saying is, learn to focus your bullshit. My dear Cairo, what are you doing? Focusing my bullshit. Good answer! 10 out of 10! What do you think is the most angsty thing you've ever created? I've ever created? Yeah. I don't really know. I'd ha- I'm sure there's something. I'd have to like go back and look, but I don't think I really kept much of that kind of stuff. So I don't think I kept any of my angsty bullshit that much. What I do know is that somewhere in my house in a bag is my first list of song books. Like my Mm. first songs I've ever written in my life. And um, I know some of those songs on the top of my head. And I know I need to find that book and destroy them before people realize (laughs) I'm a talentless hack. (laughs) Yeah, I know there's some like short stories and stuff that I would have written in like middle school that I thought were hot shit then, and I had read them after, and they were not. <laughs> they yeah. were bad. It's, it's like, all holy f- shit. <laughs> it's all fun and games, my friend, until you realize you just rewrote Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> no, the bad thing for me is that um, I was reading a lot of the like young adult sci-fi kind of stuff. Oh shit. And it was a really kind of like unintentional copy and paste, like plot wise from that sort of stuff, which isn't like bad. You know, if you're a young writer, it doesn't hurt to emulate stuff that you like and enjoy, but it was pretty obvious. Same way that like, uh, Aragon is blatantly just star Wars. I was just about to say that. Yeah. Like, but I unfortunately wasn't able to secure major motion picture rights for my stories. Mm-hmm. You know, I do find it kind of interesting. Aragon is such an interesting look at like a young creative coming into his own when mm-hmm. you like really start like s- looking through those books. Because the first book is Star Wars. Yeah, it's straight up. It's Star a new Wars. hope. Yeah, it's New Hope, uh, but with dragons. Yes, which honestly, kind of badass. I'm in for it. You know, I probably would have came up with the same thing uh, when I was 15. So, yep, yep. Christopher Paolini hit me up. I think you and I would get along great. Uh, <laughs> honestly, though, probably would. He seems like a super chill dude. I'm sure he is. Like, I'm I'm sure like the whole like being a teenage author probably fucked him up originally. But I think he may have mellowed. Mm-hmm. He, he strikes me as someone who's mellowed out because he hasn't gone the J.K. Rowling route. Yeah, you know, generally fan- fantasy writers in general tend to either be just kind of like chill, cool people or kind of racist in their own way. <laughs> no in and between. We haven't heard that. I think it's a safe bet. Yeah. No, I, I get you. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, as the books go on, they start do becoming like their own thing. Holy hell, Christopher Paolini has one hell of a beard right now. Yeah, I was looking that up too. It's a good beard. That's a good Where's beard. A yeah, a little squarish, but you know it, mm-hmm. he's rocking it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I I have not much more to say other than that. But uh, Paolini, you know, you're always welcome on the Two Schmo Show. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> One of these days, I want us to get a really fucking obscure celebrity on this. <laughs> 
It'd be fun. Yeah. I don't know what we'd do, but I don't know what we would do either. <laughs> My whole thing is I want us to get the really obscure celebrity, but never acknowledge that they're famous. Just act like they're just some <laughs> dude hanging out with us for the episode. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Oh, wouldn't it? It would just be hilarious. Mm-hmm. Oh, apparently he wrote another Aragon book. Yeah, I was saying that apparently a follow-up short story collection. I mean, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Got to pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what else do we have to cover? We kind of went on a tangent there. Yeah, uh, two other big movie releases this weekend. Um, I just realized you're... Oh, yeah. (laughs) I just realized that all spawned from Sonic the goddamn Hedgehog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, Sonic 2 is a movie. It seems fine. Jim Carrey looks good in that movie. That's all I will say. Like, if it's the kind of thing that if you like the first one, it seems like, you'll probably like this. Yeah. But, like, critically, it's still a Sonic movie. So it's like, it's fine. It's fine. It's not meant to be more than fine. It's a Sonic movie. Yeah. It's a Sonic movie where they actually have like the fucking chaos emerald in it. And it's CG and looks kind of bad. But, you know, what can you do? Um, Ambulance has Jake Gyllenhaal. I haven't heard about this, which is kind of weird. I saw a trailer for it. Have you? Yes. Did it look like anything? It looked like a really cool concept for a movie. Uh, I, it's Michael Bay. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it's Michael Bay. Oh, no. Oh, wait. No, I think I do know this. This is like a blatant ripoff of a similar movie that was done a while ago, but rather than an ambulance, it was... Uh, like a bank armored car. Whoa, whoa. I just had a memory of that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I, I do know what it you're was, talking about. It was this movie where it was like these two groups of guys. They were planning this heist and they're going to steal two armored cars. And like the younger guys in the group get kind of cold feet and are like, wait a minute. We weren't going to kill anyone. This was just supposed to be a heist. And their guys are like, stop being little bitches. Let's just do the job. So they get in the armored car with like a cop or something that got shot. Yeah. And they're trying to like evade the police and the rest of their crew while making sure this cop doesn't die. Yes. That's and this looks like that, but they're in an ambulance instead. Yes. Uh, I don't know. It looks like a Michael Bay movie with how I see yeah, it. Yeah. It's probably fine. It's, you know, it's 69%. Nice. Nice. But, um, yeah, as uh, Allison Shoemaker points out, top critic on Rotten Tomatoes here, stupid, in this case, is both a complaint and a compliment. <laughs> This is the kind of movie that is like great for, you know, Friday night, just get a pizza and don't really care what the hell's actually happening kind of thing. Dude, that's a rare type of movie nowadays. Yeah. Like I argue that it's very hard to find those now, uh, mainly because there's a million goddamn superhero movies that you need to watch on Mm -hmm. five other movies to fully understand. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the great things about like the Mission Impossible movies is that they still kind of fill that role, even when they're not that good or coherent. It's just shit's blowing up. There's also some spy shit going on and you don't really care what's going to happen because, you know, they're going to win in the end. Spoilers. If you could direct, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you could write and direct your own movie, what kind of movie would you make? Right and direct. Yeah. I would like to do probably some sort of like science fiction stuff. I think that that is like criminally underrated even today. Yeah. And I hope that Marvel keeps pushing into that more because there's a lot of really like higher sci fi concepts that I feel they could do a really good job of kind of, you know, for lack of a better word, dumbing down for a more average audience. But I feel like that's just really underexplored now. I have a good feeling once, uh, Fantastic Four comes to the MCU, that's where they'll start moving. Mm-hmm. 
but I, I, I don't think they can really avoid it with the direction they're taking, like Doctor Strange and the multiverse stuff. Oh, no, dude. That's like my like, favorite thing about Marvel. It's science fiction, not superheroes. Yeah. yeah. I think, okay, I don't want to be pretentious about this because they're goddamn comic books, but like the reason I've stuck with Marvel ever since like I was fucking 10 and like um, first started reading comics is because of like how much it's like just a giant collaborative piece of fiction. And that's so amazing to me. And that's all I've ever wanted the MCU to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just a giant collective like science fiction story pool. And it's, it's getting there. It is so close to getting there. It is. Yes. I'll say it is telling that so far the only Disney plus Marvel series to be confirmed for a second season is Loki. Yes. Which Loki is basically just a doctor who, but Marvel flavored. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. The bit Cairo, I, I hope you know this a uh, doctor strange and the multiverse of madness is actually one division season two. I mean, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, it's not wrong. Have you ever seen those weird, like, Wanda cultists on, like, Twitter? No. All they do is just praise Wanda and say she's the real hero of the MCU, which, like, I get it. You're probably young. And you relate to someone, like, having actual trauma that you're probably dealing with yourself. But it's also, like, you need to chill, bro. oh yeah we were talking about michael bay man we are going on bunny trails today when it comes to these movies <laughs> yeah all right uh last movie coming out this week yeah possibly the best one uh everything everywhere all at once yes you i've talk- seen some trailers for this and mm-hmm. it i don't know it looked like kind of hard to follow in a trailer so the fact that it's doing so well is definitely interesting me in like wanting to actually see it. Because it is that same sort of heavy sci-fi stuff. This uh, little synopsis here is kind of like so small that it's not helpful. Do tell. Let me see if I can pull it up here on like like Wikipedia. Does Wikipedia have a bit more? Uh, yeah, it's better. Evelyn Wang is a Chinese American woman who runs a struggling laundromat with her husband Waymond. Tensions in the household are rising due to the laundromat being audited by the IRS. Additionally, Waymond is trying to give divorce papers to Evelyn. Evelyn's father, Gong Gong, has just arrived from China, and Evelyn's daughter, Joy, has been trying to get her mother to accept her girlfriend, Becky. While at the IRS building, Waymond's personality changes when his body is briefly taken over by Alpha Waymond. Alpha Waymond explains to Evelyn that many parallel universes exist since every choice someone makes creates a new universe the people of the alpha universe led by the late alpha evelyn developed verse jumping technology that allows people to access the skills memories and body of their parallel universe counterparts the multiverse is being threatened by jobu tupaki formerly joy in the alpha universe her mind was splintered after alpha evelyn pushed her to extensively verse jump Jobu Tupaki now experiences all universes at once and can verse jump and manipulate matter at will and has created a black hole like everything bagel that can destroy, potentially destroy the multiverse. Alpha Wayman believes that Evelyn, who is the greatest failure of all the Evelyns of all universes, is being hunted by Jobu Tupaki because her untapped potential can allow her to defeat Jobu Tupaki. Yo, I know this movie. I've seen trailers for this. This looks good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it was the kind of thing where it was like so in the weeds at points that it looked like it was either going to be good or really bad. Yeah. And it, I'm glad that it landed on the other on the good side because it's like a really cool concept that could be executed really poorly. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with like a lot of sci fi is like if you don't know mm-hmm. what you're doing, you're going to break something. Yeah. No, this looks really cool. Like as a concept. I am hyped. 
I don't know if my theater will show it because Celebration Cinemas up here only show Morbius yeah. running for 12 hours straight. Well, so this is the interesting thing. In the U.S. and Canada's box office, the film earned an estimated $500,000 from 10 theaters in its opening weekend. And an opening weekend in only 10 theaters. And what was the amount again? Good sir? 500000 The debut had a theater average of $50,000, the second best since the start of COVID-19 for a platform release behind only Licorice Pizza. That's... And the best opening theater average in 2022 at the time of its release. That's pretty cool. So they went, this is week by week, they went from opening week of 10 theaters, second week of 38, and third week they were expanded to 1,200. Go on. There's a good chance it might actually be showing. Um, oh, let me see. Let me see. They have it. So they have it in uh, Portage here at the Celebration. Okay. Yep. It's playing at my local theater only twice. Yep. Same. Yeah. Looks like three show times a day. One probably one theater that they're showing it in because it's a fairly long movie. It's over two hours, so yeah. it kind of makes sense. I I, I just want to point out, my local theater is playing Morbius at three o five, four forty five, six o five, seven forty five, eight fifty nine, and so on. But they're only playing everything everywhere all at once. Two forty. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 3.20, 7 p.m., and then done. Yeah. I'm sad. Yeah, I don't get it. I mean, and, and it's no wonder that Morbius is actually making money. Yeah. Well, they have that Marvel title on the banner. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is doing really well. 97%, which is just like, that's just good. Yeah. 8.8 .8 out of 10 average audience rating as a 4.7 out of 5 average. You know what I've been really hungry for? Hmm. And I, I blame the goddamn Batman for this, but I've been really wanting uh, more noir movies because that movie was so good. Right? Yeah. It's untapped. Underutilized. Yeah, well, I feel like they went out of style for a while, but now, like, I, we had a good noir. I'm like, oh, snap. Can we just please get more of these? Yeah, I'd be all over that. Yeah, dude. Give me, like, fuck, I don't know. I'm going to see if there's anything new. <laughs> no, there's not. No, there is not. So non-movie releases, we had uh, Kingdom Hearts 4 announced today. Here, apparently it's the Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary, which I guess makes sense. Woo. Oh, yeah. boy. Oh. Yeah. There, Disney, you happy? Give us money, please. Do you think we'll finally get Marvel movies in this one? Since that's all Kingdom Hearts is, just like Disney ads. Maybe that's why they had to go to Earth. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, what else did we have announced? Because I know you've watched some uh, oh, interesting man. TV shows These... recently. Yes, I'll get to that. Uh, if you want a laugh, I highly recommend the YouTube comments. For that trailer? The reveal trailer. Oh, Because no. people are going to be so disappointed. I don't know why they're not being more realistic in this. But like, oh, I never would have thought the next numbered game would happen so soon with such fantastic graphics. Like, no. womp womp. <laughs> just, just stop. If it was coming soon, <laughs> it would use the same engine. The direction the art has taken is impressive. Of those pre-rendered cutscenes? These pre-rendered cutscenes. If it looks like this, I'll be shocked. They have always had such a stylistic approach. Like, come on. Yeah. It's one of the few things they have that actually justifies its existence not being Final Fantasy. I'm going to straight up say this. I don't like Square Enix's more humanistic graphics. I think they're uncanny. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They, they absolutely are. 
Yeah. They're made. Be, and it's part of like the problem is that it's because the games are so big mm -hmm. that you can't do like the last of us treatment where you're handcrafting every animation. You have to make templates and then use them as templates. Yeah. They all look like templates. Mm -hmm. They look like dolls. Yeah. Cause they are. Yeah. It's kind of the same way. Uh, you know, <laughs> what reason do you think it is that so many dark souls enemies have helmets on all the time? Cause they want to protect their, their noggin. So you can't see their faces. Nah, dude. Nah, Dark Souls it's wouldn't cheap out that way. Like these heralded games, and then you go and watch their speaking animations, and it's like the most basic mouth movement only thing. No actual facial animations. Sir, are you implying game design is really fucking hard and there's a lot of cutarounds? No, game devs are just lazy and you need to try harder. Game devs are notoriously lazy. <laughs> yes. And now they want to work from home, too? Oh, nothing's ever going to get done. Activision Blizzard had it right. Did I ever tell you it was like been my low-key dream to make my own video game, but I also know game design is so fucking hard, I don't have the time to do it as a single person. Yep. Yeah. I've thought about getting into more like the modding stuff because I think that's like both the unrealistic time investments of traditional game dev, but without any of the rewards of actually making money on the other side. Yeah. See, I don't mind that idea. My thing is I just can't code. I'm really bad at coding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. If I could like learn coding, I'd probably do it as like a side project. Mm hmm. Unfortunately, I'm a bitch. It's really hard. Yeah. It's 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 literally learning a new language. Unfortunately. It's always harder to do that when you're older. After you get out of like... Like if you haven't started to learn a language by the time you're like 12 or 14, it's kind of too late. And it gets dramatically harder. No bueno, mi amigo. <laughs> si. Yo habla espanol, gringo? <laughs> no. <laughs> And I've exhausted the extent of my Spanish. Hijo de blanco. Thanks, Thanks high school. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I'm pretty blessed because I, 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 I've also been trying to learn like multiple languages right now to keep my brain fresh. Mm -hmm. But it's like computer language. That's what fucks with me. Yeah. Yeah. Je separe es français? Uh, no. Oh. No, I am English only. English only. No, I say that. I, I probably, I am familiar enough with a lot of languages that I could, like, survive in places. I would sound like a fucking infant when I talked, but I could get by. You know, I would be able to not starve to death. So my thing is at work, uh, we have a lot of Spanish speaking customers that will call us mm -hmm. and that's cool. I like hearing it, yeah, but, um, for sure. you know, I, I, as you heard, Espanol is, is no, 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 no bueno para <laughs> mi, para uh, mi para. Uh, yes. But I can listen to Spanish pretty well and know what people are saying. Mm -hmm. And it's yep. always hilarious because I have to bring an interpreter to talk with me to be like my, you know, my speaker and yep, yep. the interpreters in the uh, Spanish speakers never fucking know I'm eavesdropping on their conversation. I will hear them say like the <laughs> darndest things and the interpreter will be like, yeah, I'm not saying that. <laughs> That's fun. It is. It makes me feel like really dirty, but it's also kind of just. Yeah, why not, dude? Like, I have this skill. Oh, yeah. I don't think people want to talk to an infant when they are talking about their insurance. I can read Spanish pretty well, but unfortunately, that's about it. Yeah, I'm much better at reading foreign languages than speaking them. Because there's enough, like, bits that get shared within the Latin ones, at least, that you mm -hmm. can kind of piece it together a lot of the time to at least basically understand what the hell's happening. 
Well, I also argue that like being so familiar with a word that you can understand multiple people's accents around that word mm-hmm. is very key as well. Man, you know, I should make that my goal this year is to just fucking man up and learn C+. Mm-hmm. I should. Speaking of manning up. Oh, no. The Oscars have <laughs> came down, <laughs> slapped Will Smith with a 10-year ban from all Academy events. Sounds like he just got Chris rocked. <laughs> I don't know. I, like we were saying, I'm 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 a white guy. I can't say too much about this because it's just not my place. But the fact that this is where the Oscars draw the line is really frustrating for me. When we've seen so many people do so much shittier things than just slap another person, and they're still allowed to go without yes. any repercussions. Do you, do you think it's a race thing? It's hard to not think it is, you know? Yeah. Like, when when Adrian Brody specifically is still allowed to attend, and now Chris, or no, sorry, Will Smith isn't, it is questionable. I think I, there's some arguments about, like, some of the other events that happened, because they didn't technically happen at the Oscars, but Adrian Brody did technically in full front of the camera, sexually assault Halle Berry, and nothing happened. Yeah. Basically, nobody said anything at the time. And I, that's concerning, to say the least. Cairo, I don't think we're going to be invited to the Oscars if you keep calling them out on their bullshit <laughs> like this. Yeah. Okay, what is your opinion on the Chris Rock uh, Will Smith slap? I think it's the most entertaining the Oscars have been in probably 10 years. Fact. Like, it was legitimately engaging in a way that the shows haven't been in a long time. Yes. Like, I don't know. It's probably generally not great. But at the same time, this is an award show. I don't know. The the trend towards having, uh, like, hosts ribbing on the audience ever since um fuck british the office guy um i can't remember his name because i haven't thought about him in so long ricky gervais thank you yes oh i i guessed yeah ever i mean it's not a huge list ever since they had him do the award shows and he would just rip into people mercilessly um it seems like that's become much more common and that has been the reason that people tune in. I would almost rather they just stop airing it. Cause like it can't be making the money to actually air it, you know? Not anymore. Like, these are movies. These are movies that have already been out for a year. There's, I guess technically ads that run on it at like the station level, but the number of people that actually watch it has been going down. I almost wish they would do like what E3 has kind of done during the pandemic and just treat it more like the award show that it actually is and less the media spectacle they so desperately want it to be or just lean into it and just let people do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. I mean, I get why they took the decision that they did, but I generally don't agree with it. I agree. Uh, my whole perspective is it is a great example of celebrity sensationalism and how obsessed we are with celebrity as a concept. Yep. And the fact that you have two very well-known household names getting at it like that, Mm -hmm. that it was just a perfect storm of a media circus to happen. Like everybody knows the Oscars are fucking boring. Nobody. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I would almost rather they be boring though. Like (laughs) imagine if we could just have a night where the Hollywood as a whole just comes together to celebrate the good shit they've done over the last year. Imagine if we could just have that and nothing more. Wouldn't that be nice? Bullshit. That would not make any money. Good, sir. 
No, it wouldn't. But who fucking cares? Yeah, I understand. I, I want to see, like, big name actors, like, being genuinely supportive of, like, the people who do the supporting shit, who do the actual dirty work. Because that's the majority of the, of the Oscars, is celebrating and giving awards to the people who are out there on the front line doing the fucking hard work every day. I know there are people offended at seeing Will Smith like slap Chris Rock in anger and whatnot. Oh, who fucking cares? Well, you know what I'm truly offended Honestly. about? Yeah, what? They cut out best editing. Like, the editor. Seriously? Yes. The shit that they cut is so... It it makes no sense. It's not about the art. There's stuff that matters yeah. that they're just not talking about because people want to see insert named actor they care about on tv yeah it makes no sense it is betraying the art form that they think that they're uh celebrating when all it really is is just advertisements to follow x celebrity on social media so they can shill out bitcoin pretty much yeah my i don't know i think they're being overly hard on will smith because they are. I'm sure yeah. they are. We all know he's probably if, not. If it happened and nobody talked about it, I guarantee nothing would have happened. Yeah. I guarantee he was probably not coming to the Oscars next year. And just. Well. Yo. You mean like before this, he wouldn't have been? No, I mean like after this. But like before they made their decision. Before would. they made their decision, yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. His like, pop- I think it seems very clear that Will Smith was like, yeah, that was not the right thing to do. And he understands that. Yeah. But or like the other thing that I've seen is if this happened at like the after party. No, no one, one would care talking about it. Yeah. No one would give a shit. Yeah. I love this. In their statement, they said that the uh, 94th Oscars had been overshadowed by the unacceptable and harmful behavior we saw Mr. Smith exhibit on stage. Maybe don't make it such a fucking spectacle then. You you invite this shit. You invite this kind of shit when you try to make it an entertainment product rather than just a fucking award show. Yeah. Big shout out, though, to the uh, whoever was on the cameras for that. Because they did a hell of a job capturing it. Yo, those guys in the booth who decided not to cut. Yeah, absolutely. Hell yes. Thank you. Well, they were like, oh, shit, something's happening at the Oscars. Right? This is not a drill. This is not a drill. <laughs> yeah. So I, I am all in support of a celebrity death match every Oscars now. <laughs> yes. Why not? What's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that could happen, man? Like, we're already bored to death. Mm-hmm. At least have a virgin sacrifice at every Oscar celebration. It's the least they can do. It's the least they can do, man. What what's the QAnon thing? Like where they eat children? Like fucking show oh, I that. Don't know this one. <laughs> Wait, you didn't know about that? No. Apparently there's like a part of QAnon that believes celebrities eat children or something like that. I don't know because I it believe it or not. Hard hitting uh, conservative that I am. Do not follow QAnon bullshit. <laughs> One of the things that I was reading this last week was apparently um, an anti-abortion advocate was found to have multiple. Uh, <laughs> did you hear about this? I did hear about that. Go on. Yeah, they were found to have uh, multiple aborted fetuses in their home. Yes. Allegedly, what they were trying to do was, like, give them, like, proper burials or something. Um, I've seen people talk about, like, oh, what if this is some attempt to try and have themselves charged with murder or something like that? Okay. Or, like, something related to like, oh, the courts have recognized that these aborted fetuses are people kind of thing. Okay. Um, but New Jersey has a specific law regarding medical waste and needing to be licensed to handle it with strict penalties for not doing so that they are being charged under instead. 
So if that was the intent, it has backfired dramatically. Holy shit. That's fucked up. Yeah. It's very fucked up. Yeah. Like, dude, what drives a person to do that? Don't answer that. I know what drives a person to do that, but I'm talking about on a subconscious level. Mm-hmm. People are messed up. No, dude. The correct term is fucked up. Speaking of fucked up. Yo. Uh, let's talk about this um, Whitmer kidnap plot thing. <laughs> oh, I get it. Because we're talking about a whole bunch of fuck ups. <laughs> yeah. I've seen talk about it. And uh, it's really frustrating because we're, we're, of course, in Michigan. So I was following it fairly closely yeah. when it happened. Um, and the whole thing is just really, really dumb. <laughs> but uh, six people were involved with this. Two took a plea deal to avoid jail time. And the other four went on to their trials. Um, two of them were found not guilty. And the other two ended, ended in a mistrial. Um, and the, the case eventually ended up being that these individuals were too dumb and not motivated to actually seriously do what they were saying they were going to do. That's a very special kind of charge. It is. That's what their lawyer argued, that they were basically these these meetings that happened were them getting together when the, the details were being planned out, were them getting together, drinking and smoking weed, and that they were too dumb to actually go through with any of this. Yeah. Yo. Um, <laughs> two of them still have charges standing for... What was it? Something about weapons of mass destruction. Because they were trying to, like, make bombs. No, dude. But, yeah. The whole thing is really dumb and frustrating. Being stupid should not be an excuse to avoid jail time or any sort of punishment for their thing that they were stupid enough to do. I just want to say that the the way this lawyer is trying to approach it is like the most mid fucking West thing I've ever heard. Oh, well, you know, they're just mm-hmm. out in the middle of nowhere, just smoking and, you know, smoking and drinking. And, you know, they're just too dumb to actually plot this thing out. Yeah. If if I ever had a lawyer, if I ever go to court over anything, I think I'd be slightly offended if they said I was too dumb to ever do anything like that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go for it, but apparently these guys were chill with it. I think that just leans more into what the lawyer was going for. Yeah. The fact they wouldn't defend themselves like that. Mm-hmm. Let me see if I can find the uh, BBC article is clearly slanted and has uh, incredibly poor amount of information in it. Um, so I'm trying to see. If I can find like actual article articles that talk about the details, because some of the quotes from the lawyers themselves were pretty plain and the BBC article has almost none of them. Well, they're lawyers, dude. They're probably not going to diss out all the shit they probably ha- have against their clients. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine being those poor lawyers? I mean, they got they they got it to work, right? Somewhat. Somehow, but you know, they did it. Were they public attorneys, or were they just like? No idea. Yeah, I don't see any lawyer going pro bono on this.
Defense lawyers portrayed the men as credulous weekend warriors, often stoned on marijuana and prone to big wild talk. They said FBI agents and informants tricked and cajoled the men into targeting the governor. Oh, really? Yeah. Beautiful. 10 out of 10. <clears throat> the other big piece of sort of legally related news uh, was I was reading that a Texas woman had been charged with murder for um, this kind of it's very depressing. I'll say this at the start, um, but because of the new Texas laws, she had been charged with murder for uh, performing an abortion on herself. Oh, fuck. Yes. Um, thankfully, I was seeing today that the uh, murder charges had been dropped, thankfully, which is the least that could happen given the circumstances. But <sighs> that's um, really fucked up. Yeah, it was pretty grim and like the whole thing was just depressing from start to finish and it was only getting worse at the time. So it was good to see that they had at least done something. It says charge sorry, charges are to be dropped, but I guess given that it's the weekend. Uh district attorney's office overseeing the case said this is not a criminal matter. I would argue yes. <laughs> Um, I was reading some bits about it. This is apparently like an overzealous sheriff that uh, applied these charges. And in the uh, law discussions that I was seeing beforehand, it was very clear about what could and could not be charged with murder. And the uh, it's unfortunate that exceptions like this had to be carved out. But, you know, go Texas with your shitty, awful abortion laws. Uh, a mother self-inducing abortion was not applicable for a murder charge. I guess there's the legal precedent. Yep. Man, I'm sorry. That's just really fucked up thinking that it's like someone had to perform their own abortion on themselves. Mm hmm. It's very depressing. Yeah. And like. <sighs> It is only going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. Um, the trend that we're seeing right now is more predominantly, I don't know how to say predominantly, uh, but more conservative states are trying to adopt similar laws to what Texas did that shift it from a criminal matter to a civil one, mm -hmm. which is clearly baseless and not supported by the constitution the constitution guarantees rights of citizens not necessarily just from the government you know yeah um and to see them so blatantly try to skirt around that is frustrating and then to see the supreme court go with it and not stay the law of being passed is kind of terrifying because what's going to be the next one you know we've seen uh fucking what was it kentucky i think passed a law that basically made uh child marriage legal again that, that was tennessee but tennessee yes. sorry yes that that it all kind of blurs together in that region if i'm honest <laughs> but yeah that's so that's a thing that was proposed yeah that child marriage law is so weird when you look at it because all they're doing is mm -hmm. trying to like make it so clerks can say no to gay marriage again but they yep. wrote it yeah. so poorly gay it makes... marriage is the problem not pedophilia yeah go they, figure they wrote it so fucking poorly it can be used for child marriage um, what was the other one i don't remember where exactly it was it might have been missouri but that might not be accurate. Um, another state in that general area was trying to pass a law that put civil penalties on people who got an abortion outside of their state. How can you enforce a state outside of your state 
Like, that is the question. Yeah. Isn't it? That is. Yeah. That, I'm um, pretty sure that's unconstitutional. There, yes. <laughs> that hasn't stopped him though. Um, but it's shit like that. That is blatantly in violation of the constitution. And they just don't care. They're going to do it anyways. Well, duh. Um, and the Supreme Court, as it currently is comprised, sees no issue letting that continue. Yo, can we just shout out the history that happened this week as well with the Supreme oh, Court? Absolutely. Um, sure, I don't get the name wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Anji make... Brown Jackson. Yes. Confirmed as first black woman on the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, I believe it's Associate Justice. I'm not too sure. Looking it up real quick. I'm skimming. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Because it's, of course, not uh, a full Supreme Court position. Because there's not a vacancy currently. Uh, uh, Associate Justice Designate of the mm. Supreme Court of the United States. So she has been designated as the Associate Justice. And I believe she has to be sworn in still. Which is why it's a designate rather than like just the full title. Mm -hmm. um, but past Senate confirmation 5347. I mean, fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Served on as a federal judge on the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia since 2021. Uh, served as a district judge for the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia from 2013 to 2021. And was the vice chair of the United States Sentencing Commission from 2010 to 2014. So you're telling me we have someone on the Supreme Court, not a full justice yet, uh, who is served on the district court for the district of Columbia. Yes. You mean Columbia has some representation all of a sudden? <laughs> Apparently, man, what's next statehood. I'd never, one of, let me see how I'm curious how this is in here. One of the big, I don't even call it big. One of the things that was being brought up by pieces of shit, like Ted Cruz and, uh, I can't be fucked. Uh, pieces of shit like Ted Cruz. It was yeah. more than just Ted Cruz, but you know, he's a, a good poster child for being a piece of shit. Um, was that as part of her um, career, she had served as a public defender. And they were trying to spin that as her being in favor of like protecting pedophiles or something. That's not how a public defender works. <laughs> yeah. And like how like it, it's it's wild like how many different layers of fucked up it is for them to get to that conclusion and then present it on a public forum in the Senate as if it's fact. I th okay, you it remember? is incredibly disturbing. I think they were going for that QAnon angle. Oh, I'm sure they were. Yeah, they're going for whatever angle they could. Yeah. But damn, dude, we, it, it happened. I, I can't believe it. No. It's pretty exciting. It's very mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Now give Columbia, I mean, the District of Columbia a statehood. <laughs> Seriously. Like, and Puerto honestly, Rico. District, I say District of Columbia and Puerto Rico at the very least. Yeah. No, I feel like we're doing a great disservice to those areas by not making them states. Mm -hmm. even like you know realistically puerto rico would probably swing conservative but it still deserves to be a state because it meets the requirements for it yeah we we have established this process already but Cairo, there are brown people the, there i was gonna say we'd have to redo the flag but yeah that's probably a bigger concern for most of the people who are against it yeah no that's entirely their problem dude yeah yeah. I mean, if we're going to have so much influence over Puerto Rico, we should at least let them have a say. I you think. Oh, well.
Usually. <clears throat> did you just yawn on my fucking podcast? I did. I am so fucking tired. Dang. For, for clarity, uh, we skipped last week at my request because work has sucked lately and I needed the rest. So <laughs> I got a story about no sleep and how much some places suck. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a friend whose car broke down. So uh, yeah. every once in a while, he calls me up when he's getting out of work at like midnight to come get him a ride on nights where it's like super rainy or yeah. Um, yeah, nights he can't reasonably walk to his place. He only lives like a mile away from this job. It's at that mm-hmm. grocery store I used to manage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one night I'm just hanging out in my room. I'm really tired from a long day of talking insurance with people who don't know how insurance works. And uh, while I am there... He he texts me like 40 minutes before it closes down. He has to leave. And I'm just half awake. And I just say, sure, whatever. It's going to be 10 minutes max. Whatever. I'm going to help a friend out. Go there. I'm half awake already. Just want to go home, sleep. And it turns out the printer's in there. Stopped working. So he can't leave until the nightly reports are filled out. So, uh. I get out of my car. I run inside because I still don't know how some of those printers work. And we like spend 40 minutes uh, trying to fix these things. We get done. We leave the grocery store. And uh, turns out I left my high beams on when I parked my car. And uh, we stood in that parking lot for like a good hour trying to figure out how the fuck we were going to get home. Get my truck home. Uh, Good news is Good Samaritan showed up. And we end up getting a jump start, but it was a fucking nightmare of a night. Sounds like uh, I actually went up to uh, all of that this week. Yo, what happened? One of the reasons why I was so late. Uh, I went and gave a presentation to the chemistry seminar talking about what I do now in the industry. Dude, I'm proud of you. Word up. Oh, yeah. It was fun. It was a good time getting to see, you know, professors and stuff that I haven't seen in a while. Did you see Dane? Mm-hmm. No, I didn't, unfortunately. I was stuck in the chemistry wing. And then I had to go to work after, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's still cool. But it was fun. It was good. It was they, uh, apparently a uh, contract chemistry lab in Lansing had their contract expire. So it was a temporary lab. They were closing it down and they had a bunch of equipment that they were uh, getting rid of that they just needed gone. Um, and all of it got a ton of it, for, as, far as, as far as I understand, basically for free. So they have a whole bunch of new stuff that they're working on getting set up. And once they do, it'll be it'll be really good. It's a huge step up for them. Hell yeah. I wish Olivet would acknowledge another alumnus that's on this podcast and what he's doing nowadays, but oh well. I mean, I guarantee, though, if you reach out to Dane and be like, hey, I don't know. <laughs> How vain would that make me look, though? That's the thing. Well, I, I, I know, but yeah. to a point, um, a lot of people just want confirmation that their uh, education matters, you know? Like, that's always, like, the looming doubt is, like, is what I'm doing worth it? And just having somebody that comes that come in, you know, a couple of years after they graduate and be like, yeah, it's worth it. It's Dude, really helpful. Yeah. I will not lie. Um, since, like, when COVID hit and I lost my job at the radio station, I had those big doubts. Mm-hmm. But I will stand by this until I fucking die at this point because it just reconfirmed for me. Uh, education, yeah. always worth it. Yeah. 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 Last piece of big news I have for today. Uh-oh. Uh, not even really big. It's more just uh, something in passing. I like following foreign elections because I'm a nerd like that. Is this France? Um, yes. Oh, God. France foreign it. election is happening. And it is eerily similar to the last one that they had. Uh, but there's a couple of things that I wanted to point out in it. Because I'm sure it's going to be making the news here soon. Because, like, statistically, it's very likely that uh macron gets reelected at mm-hmm. this point but the news is of course trying to play it up like he's not well so yeah it's a better story because yeah it's a better story 
Um, all of their stuff is Macron and Le Pen through to second round projections. And uh, there's a lot of talk about how uh, Le Pen is, you know, a strong challenge from Le Pen. And this was the same shit that we saw last time that, that France had their election. Mm -hmm. um, and thankfully, France has a runoff system where if none of the candidates get more than 50% of the vote, the top two go to a runoff. And there's a new date. Uh, it's the 24th of April would be the runoff for this one because it's almost certain it's going to go to one. Okay. Um, and it's good because it lets not major parties actually have their candidates on the ballot and people can vote for them. So you don't get stuck with one or the other in a meaningful way. You know, you can vote for somebody who you want to get elected, but realistically probably won't have it, and then still have your vote count in three weeks later when they do the runoff. Which is a good thing. Voting should matter. But this is the same thing that happened last year. Uh, it was a pretty close race in, like, the top three positions yeah. for this first round of elections. Currently, as of about an hour ago, um, Macron had 28%, Le Pen had 23%, and Melikon, who is a newcomer, had 20%. Melikon is further left than Macron. Uh, very popular amongst, hey, what do you know, people like our generation. Who could have imagined? Realistically, it'll go to a runoff between Macron and Le Pen, which is exactly what happened last year, and Macron more than swept it at that point. Because, like, if you just look at the numbers between his 28 and Melikon's 20, they're almost at 50% of the poll. Damn. So, a uh, lot of noise being made about, oh, you know, Le Pen is vying for... And it's, it's a lot of fluff. They have a very strong political system. It would be very shocking to see France go back to the Le Pen family. Because they are far-right pieces of shit. Man, why is it always families that are fi like far, far right? Families in politics. <laughs> almost like they have lots of money or something. It's almost like they're only doing it out of self-interest. Mm -hmm. No, so the, the key thing here, though, is that as far as I understand, um, Le Pen's father, at least, was like a genuine... I mean, let me look it up real quick. I, I want to make sure I get the right pejorative. I'm scared now. He's getting the right pejorative. Uh, the <laughs> controversial statements. Anti Semite. <laughs> oh, no. Xenophobic, anti Semitic. Uh, basically, a neo Nazi. For all intents and purposes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, under his uh, issues and policy positions, we have controversial statements, prosecution concerning Holocaust denial, what? and other legal problems and allegations. How does a motherfucking Frenchman deny the Holocaust? Like, I can understand yeah. it here because we have a degree of separation, but like, you are... Are Wait, literally. I didn't know about some of these. Right next door. Uh, in April of 2000, he was suspended from the European Parliament following prosecution for the physical assault of socialist candidate Annette Palvast Bergil during the 1997 general election. Ultimately led to him losing his seat in the European Parliament in 2003. Versailles Appeal Court banned him from seeking office for one year. Next category, statements about Muslims in France. In 2005 oh, no. and 2008, Le Pen was fined, in both cases 10,000 euros, for inciting to discrimination, hatred, and violence towards a group of people on accounts of statements made about Muslims in France. In 2010, the European Court of Human Rights declared his application inadmissible. Allegations of war crimes in Algeria. 
Le Pen what? allegedly practiced torture during the Algerian War between 1954 and 1962 when he was a lieutenant in the French army. He denied it and won some trials, but lost when he attacked Le Monde newspaper on charges of defamation following accusations by the newspaper that he had used torture. Le Monde has produced in May in 2003 the dagger he allegedly used to commit war crimes as court evidence. Although war crimes committed during the Algerian Wars are amnestied in France, this was publicized by the newspapers. Uh, you can list a bunch of them. Um, Le Pen sued the papers and TV presenter Michael Ricard. This affair ended in 2000 when the French Supreme Jurisdiction concluded that it was a legit that it was legitimate to publish these assertions. Dude. So he can't be charged for the war crimes, but it seems all but confirmed that he definitely did them. Dude. Uh, his daughter is the one running. Yo, that's woke. We need to vote for her then. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, uh, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on this, but... Uh, it seems very reminiscent of the last election that they had. The big stupid thing that the BBC had here, champagne on ice at the Penn HQ. Like, shut the fuck up. They literally have a bucket with wine and wine glasses. Like, So have I ever told who, you... Who doesn't? Who doesn't go into the presidential election thinking, yeah, we can win this, you know? If you If you don't... If you get that far, like, if thinking you don't, you, yeah. why are you there? Yeah. So have I ever told you that like Macron is like super fucking based? Is he? Yes. I don't doubt it. You want to know why? Hmm. Motherfucker posted like some books on Instagram about what he was reading at the time. You know, what was yeah. at the bottom of his fucking list. Oh, is this the one piece thing? Goddamn one piece in volume 100. Yeah, I heard fucking abased out of space so what I'm saying Chiral is if you want to have a successful political career it all starts with one piece at a time this is where the Seinfeld like slap baseline plays and everybody starts laughing and then the like, credits start flashing Really fake laugh track plays. Yes, exactly. So, good sir, I heard you were watching some TV shows. Yes, I have been. So let's start. Uh, let, let's do the, the quick one first. Yeah. Um, first of all, fuck Disney Plus and their parental control things. <laughs> I had a pop up end up on my phone when I went to go watch a Marvel movie like three weeks ago that was like something I, I barely even looked at it because you know you get pop-ups all the time yeah. I don't want them I ignored it I closed it I barely read it but it was something about like parental controls or something and in hindsight now I can see that it was a notification that apparently in their app parental controls were turned off by default and they had changed that to turning them on by default so when I then later went to go look up Daredevil, it wouldn't show up because of the ratings that it had. That's hilarious. So I had to go in, find these settings, and then turn them off so that I could watch it on my own fucking account. Um, like a big yes, boy. I, yes. <laughs> I have started to watch uh, Daredevil now that it's on Disney+. Plus. I have watched one episode. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. Isn't it, though? I was very, I was very pleasantly surprised. Actually. Yeah, it's not like the other shows that they do, is it? Yeah, it, no, it's not. I expected it to be being that it was like, like what, 20, 2017-ish? 2015. 2015? Yeah, 2015. Uh, did it go straight to Netflix? Straight to Netflix. Yep, I expected it to be a bit more slapped together looking, mm -hmm. and it wasn't. It was totally competent, very well shot, very well written. Some, some, you know, rough parts, clearly. You know, they're uh, both relatively, you know, a young cast, un unknown actors. But, like, on the whole, very well done. Very impressed with it. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to watching more. But when that will happen. Because uh, somebody we'll, made we'll a see. really bad decision. I... Made, I wasn't thinking about it at the time. Um, I had my folks over and we were watching Moon Knight. 
we're finishing up our drinks thinking, oh, what else can we throw on? It's like, oh, Daredevil's on Disney Plus. Now we'll just throw that on and watch an episode. They really like it, too. So I'm kind of stuck into being on their schedule for being able to watch it now. I get, can't binge it like I normally would. Get fucked. Yeah. So how is Moon Knight? Good, sir. Moon Knight is. It is different. Um, the first episode does a really good job of building up the kind of uneasy making you question like what's actually going on kind of feelings in it. Mm -hmm. And it ends really strong with the big reveal of the character itself. Okay. But it does a very good job of portraying um, the Grant, the British guy, the, the not superhero version of it um, as like him, like seeming to basically think he's going insane in a very convincing way. It's good. It's well done. Mm. Um, going into episode two, though, is when I... F it's still good, to be clear. Um, it's not bad at all. But it starts to feel like the pacing is a bit off. Where there should be a bit more happening. And by the end of episode two, you know, we're a third of the way through the series... We're only just having like the stakes set and nothing has actually happened to progress to any sort of conclusion. It's like, we know what's happening now. So the show can start, but we're a third of the way through and I feel like the show should have started by now. Sounds like it's like a Moon Knight movie almost. And this is the end of the first act. Yes, very much. That was actually one of the things that I saw in uh, some of the reviews for it, because it's, it's reviewing well. You know, it's it it is good. It's very competently made. It's well acted. Oscar Isaac does a great job. Um, that it feels like it should have been a three hour movie, two and a half, three hour movie, not six 50 minute TV episodes. Mm. It very much it kind of feels similar to the way that like Captain and the Winter Soldier did in that regard. OK. Or Falcon and the Winter Soldier with how it's very much shot like a movie, but they just broke it up. It's like a movie that they weren't confident enough would actually perform well. So they just made it into a TV show instead. Oof. Versus something like WandaVision that only works in a uh, serial format. Yeah. Well, I think that's like why WandaVision was like the best decision for them to start off these like MCU, like new era of MCU shows. Because, well, it, you know, it's very much like using the me the medium of television to tell its story. So it's very tongue in cheek in that way. Whereas a lot of these other shows kind of look like movies. I'm not going to lie. Extended movies. Yeah. With lower stakes. I've been watching Better Call Saul. Mm. Heard good stuff about it. It's really good. It's like one of the best TV shows I've ever seen. And I didn't expect to like it as much as I do. Because mm -hmm. uh, I've seen Breaking Bad. I'm a fan of Breaking Bad. Really am. Uh, however, Breaking Bad was one of those shows I had to go on and off with because I just had other things going on at the time. Better Call Saul, I've watched. Uh, I'm almost up to like we're caught up. Uh in the span of like two weeks. Yeah. It is a very good drama comedy. Nice. Yeah. Drama. It's, it's, it sounds very good. I've not seen it myself, but yeah. It is my second favorite lawyer based show. My first being Daredevil. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, I was surprised at how much of a prominent angle that was in it. Yeah, Daredevil um, does a lot more lawyering than you would think. But you've only seen the first episode, my good dude. Looking forward to seeing more. Anything else for the show today? Uh, that's all that I have. Um... Some quick updates on the situation in Ukraine. Oh, um, yes. 
more Russian war crimes. Who would have guessed? Oof. Um, but major uh, moves on the part of the Ukraine soldiers taking back territory. So very good on them. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, my name's the infamous Ryan, and I've been a schmo. I'm Carol. I've been a schmo. And this has been the Two Schmoes Show, baby.